He is our squadron commander. Smartest and strongest. A man to whom I owe my life and my living. Sometimes we work for fools who think him to be above the dirtying of his hands. Wait. Leave this one to me. It's been a while since I've had any... fun. They do not think that for very long. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Internet Personality Vangelis and Mastermind Creations' Feral Rex Adventure swerves straight into its mid-card main event with reformatted's Feral Con Squadron Commander, Leo Dux. Sticking it to the limbs first release convention, MMC have gotten possibly the most densely packed engineering of the Feral Rex team out into the wild, almost causing a hype whiplash after opening up with the two most similar members. Leo Ducks underwent a lot of revisions in his prolonged development, so let's check out the end result. A friggin' robot lion. Leo Dux takes the idea of G1 Razorclaw, stretches it over some slightly more realistic lion proportions, and then adds a giant layer of armor on top. The line between a lion skeleton grounded in reality and a super mechanical king of the jungle leads to some stuff that'll make you squint at first glance. His paws struck me as looking a little bit small, though they're really only a tad thin to allow for the transformation. This visual quirk is also partly due to the extra armor bulk, which ends up looking a bit heavy up top. Something that a more G1 Razorclaw could comfortably ride out due to the lack of realism in its skeleton. However, once you get Leo Ducks into some good lion poses, which can be a bit of a learning experience in and of itself, I think he really comes to life. This is a lion on cyber steroids, with very particular lines to its quadruped silhouette, which communicates a message of strength and power. And the head sculpt is fierce, especially with all the delicious rivets throughout its surrounding and razor-sharp main pieces. As far as the colors go, there's a particular warmth and saturation to the red and yellow that feels absolutely nostalgic to me. Those are some bullseye pantones that almost warrant that demented tangent in the TFW discussion thread. The orange and gold are a bit colder, but in a way that I feel supports the palette pretty well. The black is... Uh, black? Though the two cannons are vac metal black. I don't entirely understand this decision as much as it does give them an extra touch of flair. At least the finish feels fairly durable. Also, you can attach giant cleavers to the sides of his rear legs. It's kind of amazing. I don't have to explain myself. Posing a lion, or any kind of quadruped, is something I actually kind of suck at. It's something I discovered back when I started messing around with uh, Quadruple U from Function X by Fans Project. So something that I was clued into on Leo Ducks is that he's very much designed to be posed using feline gestures. And uh, what that means is go and start googling pictures of felines and lions and see how they move and then some of his posability starts to make a little bit more sense than it does up front like you can see here he's standing kind of at attention a little bit tall but he's looking straight forward it's very easy to put this guy together fold his arms up as one would just start folding things up on a transformer and most of the time you end up with him looking kind of down this is not like a bad lion pose by the way his mouth opens and closes Congrats. It's not a poor lion pose, but it does start to hit a thing where you're like, man, it's so easy to have his head looking straight down. And uh, some of that comes from needing to mess around with his legs a bit more. There is a trick I saw on a blog post where if you take his rear legs and bend them at the robot hips, just like up slightly and get them back together with their sandwiching connection and whatnot, uh, you have a bit more of a weird gap there, but then you also have a slightly more arched... Uh, and I, I feel like slightly more accurate looking uh, lion aesthetic. So there's, there's a lot of options uh, as far as subtleties to this guy's silhouette. His uh, arms and legs, though, just to go into the meat and potatoes, they can move forwards and backwards. Uh, this is on a ratcheting connection, and to go outwards is a separate joint. And then uh, there's, you know, an elbow. The paw uh, is on a very tight ball joint, and then that ball joint connection is on its own... Uh, hinge. Over here on the rear leg, the main connection is really just a ball joint with a very limited amount of uh, non-forward and backward motion, but it's pretty solid for a ball joint. Then the knee bends, there's another bend here, and uh, you have a similar paw set up with the ball joint and the hinge above the ball socket joint. This allows for uh, a pretty good amount of tweakability, so much so that I feel like that's what made it so hard for me to figure out how to pose this guy for ages, because there are all these moving parts and I'm 
way better at thinking in terms of bipeds than I am quadrupeds. But, like you can see here, thanks to all the uh, joints on his paws, you can get some pretty cool wide-legged stances where his feet are all, like, on the ground. And that's cool. His tail can kind of swoosh just a tad, mostly from transformation joints. It really just kind of looks at its best when it's left like that. Some of the stuff up here can actually move around. These guns can raise and lower, and uh, the, the butt hump can waggle, you know, to show that he's happy. Um, but posing him is, uh, is something to, to kind of practice and mess around with a lot before I think you need to come to a solid conclusion. Like, you can have him really go down on his haunches here, and then if you extend the the what would become robot arms slightly, if you kind of forget about the whole thing of these have to look totally different from the robot arms and to start treating them like they are lion arms, you can get some cool looking stuff where you've got him down in his haunches and he's uh, kind of getting he's kind of surveying the savanna, maybe getting ready to pounce. If you use the uh, the waist joint in the middle here, you can have him kind of going like I'm gonna cut you. You know, get his mouth open. He's all like rawr. Mew. So, uh, there's stuff to do. Uh, I'm gonna try to show some, uh, just far away pictures of a few other poses on this guy, but, uh, definitely, you know, click around the internet and look at what some folks have done who have spent some time learning, uh, the quadruped posing style, which I still need to learn. The one other thing I want to show you, his neck posability. There's kind of a, a whole system of joints inside his neck area which can allow him to kind of make his head just pivot around like this. So there's a peg up here connected to the back of the robot head, then there's a big ball socket hingey thing going into the lion head. If you disconnect that big ball sockety thing, uh, you can see it hanging there. Now there's actually a lot more range on the lion head to look around, look up, look down, etc, etc. Holds all these poses pretty well. I feel like this may have been intentional because it doesn't actually fully disengage, and then if you, you know, get your fingers in there and pop everything back together, which is, I actually I find quite tricky to do. <laughs> Usually I end up just disengaging the top here and then hand popping it back on the big ball inside. But this is a way to, to get the lion head to get a little bit more posability, and uh, I'm not sure if this is a better solution than having some kind of weird like multi multi hinge thing in here to allow for a fully connected at all times, fully twistable neck setup, but. I kind of like this option. Also, his main parts can wiggle. So, this is a pretty cool lion mode, but it needs to have some time spent with it. You gotta sit down and go like, how do I move the lion and make it do stuff that is cool? Well, not like that. But this is the way you can get the ball socket joint back on in time for transformation, which is coming up as soon as I pop this back in just to show you how it is done. This is a bad vantage point. There we go, I got it. I'll put this thing back in up here. Bam! Solid lion mode once again. Uh, anyway, this guy turns into a robot, and that is a whole adventure in and of itself. Leo Duck sheds a few parts when he transforms, starting with his lion tail. The robot legs use a couple of solid slides to elongate and deploy the feet, which contain an easily missed inner middle heel. This will make sense in a second. The rear lion legs curl and compress with multiple click-in points to eliminate any kind of imprecision. The lion paw rotates in before you lower the heel, which finishes the strange three-part robot foot that I'll look at a bit more closely later on in this video. On the way up to the upper body, you can fold up the large pelvic butt shield into its anal position, but since we've already moved one piece, hey, why not? Besides, this underbelly cluster splits up and flies away to finish our trilogy of component leprosy. Getting back to the transformation of stuff into stuff, the front lion limbs become Leo Dux's robot arms, which is probably the simplest part of the whole process, but enough swivels and flips are added to every single movement to give it just enough extra pizzazz to not feel too basic. The last part makes another simple step kinda crazy. The lion head folds down into Leo Dux's chest, but its mane tucks away while doing so, in four sections. This was terrifying to do on the old gray prototype at BotCon 2013 due to the fully plastic construction, but now, metal friggin' ball joints with palm-like plastic cups. And after all that, there's one last peg connection just to end on a concrete note. 
And with his robot mode, Leo Dux goes full Razor Claw. With a lot of the same qualities as his lion mode as far as color palette and surface sculpting are concerned, Leo Dux's prime quality as a biped for me is his solid sense of proportion. He's got a clear and confident skeleton beneath all that armor plating. This is a nice, slightly beefy robot man with a small backpack and a loud and proud lion head on his chest. The small silver hydraulic detailing found on the rear lion legs makes a bigger appearance on the insides of Leo Dux's legs, and I dig the red vent paint up on his shoulders as a means of representing that color point that, back in the 80s, was made entirely of folded lion paw. Leo Dux has a badass head sculpt whose coloration was the subject of much debate. I like the compromise reached here, with a smaller orange plate over the wider yellow faceplate beneath, and the shiny blood-red crimson visor that loves to catch the light. The guns that continue to chill out on Leo Dux's back can rotate forward into a firing position, but why not just rip them off? They'll tab happily into either side of the Dux's forearms, serving as a semi-easter egg function and stand-in for his lack of dedicated long-range weaponry. But honestly, his vibrating sonic cleavers are so goddamn huge, I'd call them borderline long-range melee weapons. Look at the things! They're way easier to install than Bovis or Fortis's knives, and are threatening as all get out! You can also get a little Oppenheimer and combine them into a fairly huge broadsword for when Leo Dux needs to channel the spirit of Zangar Zonvault. The optional butt plate can be transformed into a big buckler shield that also makes use of the forearm slots. This is a great alternate function for what would otherwise be a big blatant anal overhang, though I agree with my buddy Aaron in that it would be nice if the shield also had a handle for non-buckler defensive strategy. But wait, you cry! What about all that other stuff that jumped ship during the transformation? Well, the tail splits in two and is supposed to tab into the backpack cannons. Unfortunately, the tolerances on those connections are extremely loose. I suspect it may have been some kind of discrepancy caused by the vac metalization of those guns. Either way, it's a bummer that the ducks can't use them as cudgels of some kind. They just look perfect for it, just for beating brains in and splattering them and... As for the little underbelly things, they'll eventually find a home on Talon's wing pack. For now, you can stick them onto the bottom of the sonic cleaver handles for an easy storage solution. No slight meant to the ducks, but in his robot mode, his posability is a whole lot simpler than in the lion mode. He's got a ball-jointed neck with expressivity up the yin-yang. His shoulders have a buttery ratchet in that direction, and a buttery separate ratchet in that direction. There's a double joint on the elbow that does not offer, like, a full-on hand-up-here curl, but there's no room for it, so I think this is pretty good. His wrists have not only a swivel, but the transformation joint is allotted enough room for a natural uh, wrist bend, or I suppose more of a wrist tilt for when he's holding stuff. His waist can turn, and I think that's pretty impressive given... Uh, how much this guy's trying to do at once, like having the balance of this densely packed chest and fairly packed pelvis and keeping a clear delineation between them so as you can still do this. I kind of dig that. And if you have the pelvis plate on the back, it is on the classic mastermind ridged ring, so you can move it around on its own. If you choose, his hips are on slightly less buttery ratchets. These are a bit more uh, heavy ratchets. Although the outward ratchet is quite buttery. And uh, his knees, similar. Buttery. Ratcheting. There's this other joint, though, which I'm setting off by accident now and then. You might have noticed it, especially if you got this toy. You might be thinking, like, what on earth is this for? That's for Feral Rex. Uh, Feral Rex's hips uh, are technically up here, but when it's all said and done, this is actually supposed to offer a forward hip rotation, uh, that does not immediately start banging into the, the big skirt that's going to be over the pelvis. So, if there's one thing that's kind of a bummer about this guy's articulation, it's that that joint doesn't somehow lock, because it is an easier joint to move than the hip up here. The hip is way heavier than the Feral Rex sub-hip joint, and you can use these hips for Feral Rex as well. Uh, this is just to, to offer more cosmetic options and posing when you have this whole team combined together. So I wish this thing could lock, because it is way easier to move that forward than it is to move all of this forward. You have to be a little bit conscious of that. His feet are a crazy, like, triple piece thing, where tilting of the ankles happens on the front toe, and it can happen on the back heel. So... This is an interesting setup. Uh, it means this guy is obscenely stable when standing because he has three platforms, and even when you've twisted uh, two of them, 
there's enough stuff here to keep everything all together when you're posing them. Let's let's take a look down here. Let's get some uh, different degrees of leg splay. So we've got we've got normal legs, and you get them out here, tilt everything into place. Now they're all splayed and looking flat to the ground on either side, and everything is still cool. So it's a cool it's it's a cool foot design. It's a little bit tricky uh, to play around with because due to the lack of this thing clicking into this area because there's a big ratchet joint here for the combiner foot peg, or I suppose the knee peg, it means that it's pretty easy to do that. And when you do that, it's pretty easy to do that. And when you push this down, now everything's out of whack. So you have to be, every now and then, checking down there to make sure everything's all flat. Also on mine, this foot comes up a little bit more easily than the other foot. But uh, the nice thing about this is it's pretty easy to see if something's off, and it's super easy to tweak. And I think this is a great compromise to allow for like this shape of foot, uh, as opposed to like just a big flip out panel on the front. Um, I, I'm really digging how the lion foot is not involved anywhere. Like all the lion paws are not involved in any of this stuff. Oh, and one final piece of articulation. I nearly forgot. This is a very important one. Get ready to have your mind blown. Oh! Leo Dux is going to be the centerpiece of any Feral Con display that hasn't got the team combined into Rex. Now, granted, like 99% of the people buying these guys will have them combined on the shelf, but still, the Dux looks just a bit bigger than Bovis and Fortis, but not so much bigger as to be unable to fit in with them as a unit. While some of his engineering is dedicated to the combined mode, he pulls off the trick that his podial compatriots achieved in feeling like a fully featured standalone toy without crutching on being part of a combiner. Specifically, it's thanks to the articulation design of his lion mode, full posability of his robot mode, and multifaceted accessory play patterns of all his visible weapons, backpack cannons included. The only straight-up combiner exclusive and hidden engineering rests inside his chest. I do wish the Rex intended hip joint could fully lock up on Leo Dux's robot mode, and I'd have preferred the limb posts being fully hidden on his shoulders. Combiner talk aside, the main negatives I've found on Leo Duck's kick off with both his parts forming and lack of solid storage for those parts. The tail pieces really needed to be a handheld weapon option for the ducks, all issues with their backpack tab tolerances aside. And I really feel like the underbelly chunks could have been weaponized too. They straight up look like boxy machine guns of some kind. I actually spent a good hour assuming they fit onto Leo Duck's arms somehow for that very function. Just sitting there cramming them on from every angle, thinking maybe I'm just not clever, and it turns out that my cleverness is still up for question, but they also don't fit on his arms. After all said and done, I've got to congratulate the Ducks on succeeding at the heavy and numerous balls he's got to juggle. He's not only part of a combiner team, he's its core. And I think the numerous quality control and refinement passes he's undergone really show how polished and nuanced a toy he is. For all the stuff packed into this figure, its only major suffrages are some lost accessory potentials and the small aesthetic bummer of Rex pegs being visible on his shoulders. One could argue that the intricate nature of the Lion Mode's articulation could be an issue up front, but speaking as someone who needed a while to learn how to pose it properly, I think it's a worthwhile hurdle. The payoff is pretty badass. Anyway, this has been Internet Personality Evangelist, and in releasing the central component of the team's combined form, I think it's time for a Feral Rex check-in, don't you?